So if you watched my last video, I'll put a link up there, you saw that we put the body of the 1940 Ford onto the rotisserie. So I thought today I'd give you a little bit of a tour of this rotisserie because it's homemade, it's not that hard to make, and hopefully you'll figure out how to make your own. Stay tuned. So the basics are this. You have what is effectively a T. Made up of some fairly thick, strong, square tubing. So in this case, we're using two and a half inch, sorry, two and a half inch outside diameter with what looks like one and seven eighths or so inside diameter. And then of course this is one and seven eighths outside diameter to slide in and out. So having these bars that slide in and out here with the wheels on them, that allows you to make the whole structure wider or narrower. That isn't absolutely necessary. It makes it really easy to store the rotisserie when you're not using it. Um, but for the most part, if you figure out your total width, which should be a little bit wider than the body of your car, then you should be safe. So these casters, these are locking casters, which I've never actually locked when I've used this. And it's welded in through here. If you can see, it goes up through and welds at the top. To stop these inner ones from sliding in and out, we have some nuts welded here and these bolts just basically press up against this, the jam nuts type of thing. And again, this whole thing isn't very necessary to do this, but we did it anyways. Uh, another thing to note, this is all professionally welded. This is not something I did. You need a good welder to get penetration on thick metal like this. This is pretty thick steel here. So you do need a good welder to do this. The upright, is basically two inch with a bracket welded on the bottom here which is just then bolted to the main lower frame rail. We got these two gussets here these are very necessary you do need to put some gussets here that's one by one tubing heavy wall tubing you didn't have to bolt this again this was all bolted to be taken apart for storage. If, uh, if you got the storage space, you don't need that. You could just weld that directly on there and you could probably weld this here rather than bolt it. So this is a bit more complicated than, complicated than it needs to be. So again, on this bottom rail, this can be just one piece welded to the upright with two pieces of one by one as braces. So going up here, the next part we have is this. I don't know what you'd call that. But again, this square tubing is probably about the same size as this square tubing. So you need it. Yeah. So you need it to go a fairly tight fit over this. And this here slides up and down here to get the height you need. The height you need, this adjusts your pivot point, which is here. And your pivot point wants to be at your center of gravity that uh, from, this, from side to side. Again, we've got nuts welded in here with the bolts just basically holding it more or less in place. So the other thing holding this up 
is this hydraulic jack. This is probably the only thing that you're going to have to spend big money on. Um, well, steel prices now, you're probably going to have to spend a lot of money on steel too. But what are these are from? Are these are from a, um, a cheap Chinese um, engine lift, like a cherry picker. That's the size you want. If you scrounge around, if you ask around, you can get these um, from different sources. And I'm not sure the, 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 you know, how many tons this is, but it's a fairly, fairly sturdy one. And what we did up here, this is just a hub, automotive, standard automotive hub. And this is just a brake disc turned the other way around, bolted up like it would be from the factory. So this was from a front wheel drive car, I believe. And we got this out of a scrap bin. Then we have this piece of angle iron here with a tube welded in it. And in that tube, it's just a bolt. That bolt goes through these holes, which we drilled in the rotor, which holds whichever, however way you want the car to be. As an added safety, we added a little strap here, which allows me to take this bolt in and out. So that bolt isn't holding anything now, obviously, but uh, when you're placing the body and figuring out, you know, how upside down or sideways you want it, this bolt lets, gives you several options. And you can drill as many holes as you want for this. So then this, when this is upright, the body would be upright. So in that case, we would probably be putting this bolt through, say, this hole to keep it upright. And when you put a body, car body onto a rotisserie, it is about balance. You want your pivot point again in the center of the car. So the car is sort of balanced this way. And, uh, and then you also want it balanced the other way. And that's where it comes to this. So this, same size tube as this, goes through this, which is the same size tube as this. So basically you only got two different square tubing sizes. And they all, the smaller one slides inside the larger one. And the way this works is kind of hard to see, but there's another, right, same story. We got the nut welded on, and we got a bolt going through it. And that just ties this wherever you want it, up and down on this on this piece here. And then again, that comes through to the, what is now upright, but usually it's not upright. With more bigger pieces here, with jam nuts. We're missing one here. You only really need one, we found. I mean, this is just one, and it's holding, it's holding my car up in the air. So from this point on, it's all custom to the car. So these have been used on several different vehicles. You can, you can take this off and you can face it. You can face it that way in if you want. You can face it up if you want. Whatever works for you. Again, this is just welded on just for this car in particular. So these are fairly, you can make these fairly generic but from this point to mounting wherever you mount them on the car is going to be very specific to each car. This rotisserie, rotisserie has been used for probably uh, five cars that I know of. Then at the bottom here we've got another square tubing that kind of comes to an end. It has again has a jam nut in it or bolt to uh, tie it in to this lower bar which again goes between the front part of the rotisserie.
to the back. And the back part is identical to the front. The only difference is going to be how it's mounted to the vehicle. Okay, in this case here, we don't, we don't use this. So this is, again, this is a hub, but we didn't put the um, brake disc on there. And we don't really have any way to, to lock this one. You could, obviously. So this is the rear one. The front one is the main one for locking it in place. And again, you see how we've modified it to work to mount the body onto it. Again, these are just chunks of metal we've used to make it all work. And on this end again, we have the hydraulic jack which holds it up, which you can raise it and lower it. This lower cross brace is just two pieces of metal that sort of C-channel, sort of tie into each other. And then we just, again, every vehicle you have to drill out, put a nut in the bolt to keep the distance that you want from the front of the car to the back of the car. So when you mount the car, you've got to consider pivot points. With pivot point being First one being here, basically the center, and that pivots this way. So when you first put the body onto the rotisserie, you want it to just sit flat and not spin around. So if you need to adjust the pivot point, so for example, if you find it too difficult to turn the car on its side um, because it's bottom heavy, what you would do is you would undo this, move this bar in that way, which will change the pivot point to balance the car on the rotisserie. So that's basically what that slide is for, is just to change a pivot point up and down to balance the car, to make it possible to move it on its side easily. One person sort of can do this. This is not perfect, but it's pretty, pretty darn good uh, in my opinion. If you do it perfectly, you should be able to spin a car with one finger. This car, you need both arms and a friend's help sometimes. So the other thing you have to consider is not just the pivot point so it spins easily. You also have to put into uh, or raise the vehicle enough that you can put it on its side. So when this car is sitting you know, straight like a normal car would be, not on its side, it's not high enough to spin it onto its side. So that's why you would have to pump up these jacks to get it high enough to spin it on the side so it misses the floor and misses the, the bar along the bottom. I don't know, hope that helps. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's how this rotisserie was made. Again, it was made from, from scrap. And you know, you could get creative too. Um, you know, with these, with these uh, hydraulic jacks, you could probably use mechanical jacks or something like that. Uh, but you do need to raise and lower, raise and lower the pivot point on the upright there. So, any questions? Uh, feel free to let me know. And uh, I hope uh, hope you got something out of this. Thanks for watching.